Put the gun down before you kill someone. Teenage Girls Diary. Hello, and welcome to another Dollar Store Drive-In. I'm your host, Laura. I'm Joel. And we're the Newly Dads. We are. We've been doing Dollar Store Drive-In for quite some time now. And um, this is our first time airing on Tingler Television. So we thought we would explain a little bit about what... Um, Dollar Store Drive-In is, who we are, and give you a little bit of a, a history into the Newly Deads before we jump into the meat and potatoes of what we do on this um, little show. Just so. a, a brief introduction, as it were. Yeah. So, we've been on YouTube for... Over a year now. Yeah, like yeah. since 2021. Um, we got married in uh, 2020 at the end of... Um, October, so on, yeah, uh, yeah October on 31st, Halloween, and uh, we didn't get to have our big celebration because everybody knows what was going on during 2020 and 2021 and even now. Continues. To uh, but uh, so we had our um, big celebration in 2021, and uh, shortly after that, we uh, uh, decided to start doing YouTube videos. So we do record out of our house. Uh, this is one of our dogs, so you're going to see Shaggy pop up every so often and probably Bailey. Um, but, uh, you know, we're just a, a married couple who enjoy talking to each other and we like horror and all sorts of things. So yep. we started this whole thing out because of snacks. And yeah. it's evolved into this other thing. This is actually episode, I believe, nine of Dollar Store Drive-In, technically. Yep. But, uh, yeah, we used to do Dollar Store Drive-In and Dine-In, so we would eat uh, uh, fun food on a Friday, yep. um, and then we would uh, watch a movie and uh, kind of talk about it then after. But um, yeah, we it's, this has kind of evolved into something where we're like, we don't always have to be eating a, <laughs> you know, a big meal while we're doing this. So um, yeah, we're just having a lot of fun. So uh, what is Dollar Store Drive-In? Uh, essentially, it, it boils down to the fact that... Uh, we kept seeing movies for sale at the Dollar Tree, and of all places, exactly. And he said it to me, and I was like, "They don't sell movies at the Dollar Tree." And he's like, "Oh, I bet you they will." And I was like, "No." And he said, "Yeah, for so sure." <laughs> we went and just dug through the bins, and it's just like this weird conglomeration of occasionally there's a good film, a lot of times there's a bad film, uh, weird independent European stuff that you don't really know about uh, American stuff just all over the map and so he was like look this treasure trove of amazingness and so just started picking through them and um, I think uh, I grabbed a few for Valentine's Day last year that's how and, it started. and that's how it started I was like oh they do sell horror movies here so I was trying to find like the spookiest looking ones and then um, we did a Valentine's Day thing where I like said um, like we had a budget of 10 bucks yeah. and so I, I got him five movies and a box of Twinkies. Um, so I ended up, you know, doing awesome on my five or my $10 gift. The Twinkies are long gone, but, but the, the movies films are not. And the memories will always. <laughs> <laughs> but then we went back, we bought another stock uh, round we bought another round and now we've got almost 40 films yeah. uh, that have since, since, uh, we, Talked with Eulogy and uh, Tennessee Macabre, you know, the guys over there that uh, we were going to join Tingler. They recommended us utilizing this uh, dollar store drive-in, as we call it, drive-in on a diet, as yeah. Laura calls it, um, to kind of be our vehicle to um, dip our toes into this pool, so yeah. to speak. So we're excited to be on Tingler Television. Thank you guys for having us. And um, hopefully you guys enjoy the show also. Um, you can find us on uh, YouTube at The Newly Deads. Um, all the content there will be different from here. This is specifically recorded for Tingler Television. So we yeah. kind of designed something just for you guys. Um, but if you like it, you can go check out our, our 153 videos so far uh, that we on have on YouTube. YouTube. And our, then um, we, also, we also create art together. So yep. um, we have a website, uh, thenewlydeads.com. So you can check out some of the stuff there. We're 
trying to always upload things there. We've got a spooper market um, full of stickers and mugs and prints, um, and prints and totes and all sorts of fun things. Um, you know, if you like horror or like um, Halloween, um, spooky, cute stuff like we do, then that would be a, a good uh, place to check out at least. Um, and we also do pop-up markets at uh, local stores. Uh, we're in the Midwest, uh, so um, like northern Illinois kind of area. Uh, so if you're ever in this area, sometimes we do have little pop-up markets. Yep. Um, we're going to be part of a convention that's going to be in this area um, at the end of April. So we might be even talking about that eventually. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So we'll, we'll throw some promos in here and there, but we don't want to overwhelm you with information to start off. Yeah. So, uh, for this first installment, uh, the very first movie we watch, we, we choose these at random. So, out of the, the large stack of movies that's continually growing, um, we will randomize our selection so that way, you know, we're not favoring anything in particular. So, something that we're really dreading watching could be the next thing we watch versus something we've been wanting to watch that ends up, you know, being a month from now. So, the very first one that we did on our Pick a Flick video, which is uh, one of the videos you can check out on uh, our YouTube channel, is Eye of the Beast. This little gem is starring James Vanderbeek. So, you got a beak versus a beak, as it were. Yes. Um, since it is a squid like, oct well, octopus type creature, I guess. You know, they got a beak hidden underneath everything. The tagline um, says, Fear runs deep. Uh, <laughs> Um, far less fear. I mean, it, you know, you'd, you'd have to drink a lot to enjoy this, probably. So maybe beer runs deep would be more appropriate. I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is a, a made-for-film, TV film uh, in Canada uh, from 2007. It is very much feels like a, a BBC production from 1987, if you know what I mean. Uh, very low production quality uh, value. And it feels like like you'd be watching a Tom Baker episode of Doctor Who, kind of in that vein, if, if you catch what I'm, what I'm throwing out there. Uh, currently on IMDb, it has a rating of 4.3 out of 10, which... It's actually is, pretty high, yeah, considering... Um, I mean... We've got a dog over here that might be barking in a second. <laughs> we've got three dogs, and, and yes. one of them has decided to get vocal. Um, yeah. When Vanderbeek is your main draw, and I don't have anything against him personally, um, you know... It creates a, a little bit of a, a conundrum as far as what you're going to get. The premise, according to the Internet Movie Database, is a young scientist arrives to a small fishing town to fight against a creature living under the water. Sounds pretty innocuous. I like the, the thing on the back of the, the movie a little bit better. It's at least a little bit more, like, interesting. Do you want me to read it? Go right ahead. So, in a small fishing village, panic and fear are spreading as a legend of an underwater beast grows. When government scientist Dan Leland, James Vanderbeek, is sent to investigate the murky waters, he soon uncovers a sea monster beyond anything he could have ever imagined, complete with massive tentacles and a taste for human flesh. I mean... That sounds a lot more it's not. It's not wrong. I mean, he left the creek to head to the... What is it, an ocean? Yeah, we I said he know. left the creek to go to the... I don't even... No, it was a lake. Was It, it wasn't even an ocean. It was no. a lake, yeah. Which most of the time the lake uh, apparently looks like a swimming pool. Um, just, just no, maybe it was the ocean, but yeah, it just... It seemed like a lake, I thought. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like that at all. But when you're dealing with, you know, low budget, you got to kind of suspend disbelief a little bit. Yeah. Um, this is directed by Gary Yates who currently has 43 credits on IMDb, and out of those 43 credits, 18 of them are holiday-themed movies. Majority of them are Christmas-themed. Yeah. This one, you said this, this is a made-for-TV. This was, yeah, before he started his, his trend of doing holiday films. This is one of the uh, couple of movies he did that were kind of more yeah. um, horror-themed. Uh, it's written by Mark Mullen, who the only credit on his list that I know of is a, I don't know if you remember a movie uh, called Extreme Ops. <laughs> With the X what? Games being very popular, it was all about... Why would I know that? Well, it's kind of like the Vin Diesel Triple X movie, but with a team. Oh. So, like, you know, they're into extreme sports, but they're, you know... Yes. Operative, so it's extreme I see. ops. Mm, that's clever. It's not. <laughs> um, 
And, of course, starring James Vanderbeek, as we said, who's known for Dawson's Creek, uh, the Jay and Silent Bob movies. Uh, he actually was in Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment 23, which I know you were... Yeah, I know I know he was in that. I, yeah, that was a yeah. good show. He didn't watch that. most of the episodes, it looked like. Yeah, he was like a neighbor. Oh, yeah. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I could, I'd be curious to see him doing comedy. It was pretty uh, funny, because like, he... he, he he was like dry, you know. He's like was the like sexy dry. neighbor next door, kind of. No, thing. he was like the, yeah. It, I think he was just kind of like the the asshole kind of guy. Oh, like, we'll yeah. check it out. It was it was pretty funny. I'm curious. Uh, he was also on CS, CSI Cyber. If you knew that's a thing, uh, <laughs> there were which so many CSIs. Seemed to be on all the episodes, and he's got the thing that he has the most credits for outside of Dawson's Creek is an animated kids show called Vampirina. That sounds like a spooky kid show. It is. Oh. Yeah. It's this little, this little little girl that's a vampire. That's cute. Which that's unfortunate. Kirsten Dunst, you know what I mean? Um, oh, yeah. So, yeah, she's a little a little vampire, and he's he's done, like, like 30 episodes or something of it. Hmm. I, I, the character looked familiar, but I didn't do we'll have to check too, it out. too deep of a dive. I do see that there's, like, a thing on here that says Man Eater Series. So is there, there must be a series of these. Yeah, I just noticed there's like a little like you do, know do we symbol have to on watch the, the whole series. Maybe because the this, tales are true. At a dollar twenty-five, we spent three dollars too much. Oh, if you know what I mean. Um, so so yes. Before we get into what else is on my notes here. Yeah, the way that we do our ratings and stuff like that is uh we usually will like talk a little bit about it this is definitely not spoiler free so if you're planning on seeing eye of the beast pause this or whatever and watch this and then come back and agree with us (laughs) or just sit back and relax and know that uh, if you do decide to watch this in the future you'll probably forget you know like the some mm. of the stuff that we're, we're talking about. <laughs> Anyways, well, maybe, maybe not. Which maybe PTSD related, I don't know. Yes, yes. Um, but we always choose um, like something from the movie to rate it out of. So it's always one out of five. Um, like we've had one out of five dolls or one out of five something. Yeah, there was like funny I'm teeth or something now. like that. So we decided to do one out of five tentacles. So at the end of our little uh rant here that we're gonna go on um we're going to rate it um additionally if you stay to the end joel is a like a library of horror like he has watched so many documentaries and um yeah he watches every single special feature from every single movie that he owns and he's got thousands so i asked him at the end of each show to give his little pick of the week um, whether you agree with it or not is always going to be up to your opinion, but... And sometimes it'll be something you've heard of, and sometimes I may try and see if I can find something Something obscure, obscure that no one has seen. Like this week's is a little bit more popular. Yeah. I don't know that you had heard of it, but for most... He hasn't even told me, so I'm going to oh, be surprised. I thought I mentioned it, but I don't know. No. Um, but yeah, so we're going to do a little, like, uh, yeah, we're watching kind of a maybe a crappy movie or, you know, not such a great movie. But at the end, he's going to give you kind of a little gem. Uh, so you can do some homework. And then if you want to, like, interact with us, you can always go on our social media, Facebook. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and tell Joel, do you agree with him or do you not agree with him? And there's going to be a chat feature on Tingler eventually. So you should be able to discuss this as you're going and, uh, you know can shoot us an email uh, <laughs> contact at the newly like, you love to hear from you also Joel, or like i want to hug you oh, we like hugs <laughs> we do uh fun fact at the beginning of the show uh the intro that we made for this all of the clips in the intro are from prior episodes of um dollar store drive-in so if you see those on there and you're like what's that from if you never you're interested in seeing the movie let us know we'd be happy to tell you the ones at the end are not yeah but the ones at the beginning are uh, just a little insider for you people who are first so yeah trailer? so yeah we're gonna pause it uh he's gonna show you a little bit of a trailer and then so that way you can get a feel of the movie and then we're gonna discuss the pros and the cons of eye of the beast so we will be right back at a remote lake what was that something in the water check it out an otter he's about to make waves your hands are cold and wet. Well, 
Welcome to Fells Island. Watch out for those lake monsters. I'm Dan Lehman. I'm here to see Officer Thomas. If you guys are gonna start talking about a giant squid, I'm out of here. Who said anything about a giant squid? Now, one scientist. Hit those lights! Does anyone hear me out there? Man in the water! Must stop an uncanny beast. Is he dead? <laughs> Before it drags an entire town. So what's your plan? I'm gonna shove a harpoon through its heart. Into the abyss. Big and it's coming in fast. What is that? It's under us. Oh my god. If you can look it in the eye. It's gonna kill us, man. It's just gonna pick us off one by one. It's about to get dark out here. Then you're already dead. Get out of there now. <laughs> The beast. All right, so that was a interesting little uh, trailer there. It, it, it gives you a, a definitely a good good feel for what to expect. Yeah. Because when we started it, um, when we watched it, we were both like, "What the heck?" He's yeah. a long way from the creek. It was. It was. It you know. Yeah. 90s television, this was lesser quality he, than that. Yeah. The whole time, he but. just seemed very surly, very like... Undawson-y. undawson he, he was not a very enough. nice, nice, nice uh, Mr. Beak. And like I said, I have nothing against James Vanderbeek. I, no. I've enjoyed him in the, the Jane Silent Bob films. Um, I used to watch Dawson's Creek because of Kevin Williamson. I liked him that much. You know, Scream, I know what you did last summer. I was like, well, let's see what he's got going on here. But, um, yeah, I, uh, I I feel like, honestly, like he, he gave a good performance for what it was. Um, you know, despite the fact that, that the script was a little by the books. Yeah. And the other actors were kind of not all there. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean... He did fine. He did fine. He was fine. Yeah. yeah. It just... It was a pretty boring movie. Yes. Um, Little Racist. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. It, a little racist. So, um, it, oh, like, boy. Native American racist kind of stuff. Do you remember that? It wasn't like... Like, they were saying, like, like these... They were talking about fire water and, like, you know, yeah, stuff. Like, a, but, like, in a really condescending, like... For 2007, it wasn't very... PC. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know if that's a thing anymore, but it. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it didn't feel very good. Yeah. Those aspects. Yeah. Of it, I was like, but. oh, that was interesting. Uh, he kept he kept calling that one lady a half breed. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I was it, like, what kind of racist, weird? Like, I'm like, did, why? <laughs> it was a little. It was some strange choices that yeah. were made. Again, nothing against Vanderbeek wasn't really. A no, part of that. he didn't no. write it. No, it no, was, and he wasn't the one that was that was being like that. No, it was one of the townsfolk that was, yeah. was talking. About like they the, just didn't the like sheriff. Yeah, the sheriff. Yeah, they didn't yeah. like the sheriff. They didn't like her. Um, right. But ultimately, in the end, oh right, they yeah. the 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 Native American, the indigenous people, and the uh, the rest of the town folks had to come together to defeat the giant squid? octo monster. It was a squid. Thing. I thought he called it a squid. He called it something. It looked like, I mean, the, the head shape looked like an octopus. He called it something chomp or bite or something. Like, he, yeah, he called it some, like, technical name, but I was like. I think it was supposed to be kind of crackeny. Yeah. But, like, it rose up out of the water. So you see the eyeball. That's, like, the main thing. You see one of the eyeballs, and it rises up out of the water, and it just kind of sits on top of the water. Not fully, like, just, like, the head. Great graphics. And so I'm trying to figure out, <laughs> is it underneath, you know, doing this for dear life because it's it's got this one or two tentacles that are like grabbing people yeah getting very very weinstein with it very handsy <laughs> and they um <laughs> they there's a little bit of blood and guts not much because again it's it's a tv movie but they like cut off one of the arms and yeah yeah they uh, were and the things were like ripping people apart weren't they i mean that's that's the cover. Yeah. Um, in the there was at the very beginning there was a, an attack where there was a little bit of violence happening, but it wasn't 
Yeah. It, it wasn't, you know, anything graphic. Uh, I wouldn't say it's, you know. It was not, it was a made for TV movie. It wasn't gory and bloody. It was like, uh, you know, public TV kind of thing. It right. wasn't, you know. Not like Showtime or something. Shudder. Like yeah. <laughs> something like that. Uh, or Tinkler Your, your 10 year old could probably get away with watching it if you have a 10 year old that you would let watch yeah. this kind of fair. But. Yeah. Um, there was a funny line in it, though, I wrote down, I remember. And uh, there was like some lady talking about the the sheriff and you know uh, she didn't like no one liked the sheriff for whatever reason um except she was a mr. woman Vanderbeek. except for mr vanderbeek and i think she said that uh she's playing him like the biggest fish that ever bit <laughs> i was like what does that even mean <laughs> he's a sucker i don't know it yeah was, it was so weird it 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 definitely i mean what did we expect to be yeah. honest you know when we saw it and we saw who was in it we knew that it wasn't going to be that but we were expecting a little more because we've seen some of the stuff that we've gotten from there um, that we were pleasantly surprised with. Um, he's doing that because I hit my arm on the chair and he thinks somebody's at the door. <laughs> so if there's ever a zombie apocalypse, we're in trouble. Yeah. And we're going to have barkings and all sorts of things. We're going to go first. So just, I'll say it now. See you guys later. Sorry. It was, uh, <laughs> it was fun knowing you at the time. Um, yeah. We will be the first to go in a zombie apocalypse. Yeah. But let's say you're... Getting over an illness, you you can't leave the house. You're stuck in bed. You're eating chicken soup. You have got nothing else to do. You got nothing but time on your hands. This comes on. Okay, sure. You could do worse. Yeah. I once, when I was sick, sat with my roommate and watched Getting Even with Dad seven times in a row. So you can do worse. I mean, you Macaulay could. Culkin and Ted Danson. Yeah. That's a pairing. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you could, you could definitely, it, it's not that bad, but it's not that good either, to be fair. So what would you give it on a rating of one to five tentacles? And I should have been thinking about and this I'm ahead of time. I'm tentacles. It's easy tentacles to... Tentacles all over you. Tentacles. For those of you who've seen, uh, Better Off Dead. Um, out of, uh, I, I, I feel bad saying this. I'm sorry, Mr. Vanderbeek, but I'm going to say one. Ooh. Yeah, I, I don't need to see this. I'm going to be honest with you. I started falling asleep. He had to pause it and then wake me up. So I'm going to also give it uh, a one. I was like... I, I would I give know. it one sucker off of a, a tentacle. Like, oh. it's that bad. Not even it's a like full a, tentacle. Not even a full tentacle. Wow. So yeah. it's like a calamari-sized tentacle. Yes. I am sorry, Mr. Vanderbeek and all of the other people who put their heart and soul into Eye of the Beast. Yeah, people spent time and money and effort somebody people. somewhere this is their favorite film when i used to work at a video store i used to always say whenever people are like this is a bad movie i'm like for every movie that's made there's somebody out there that that's their favorite film it's true so somebody out there loves this movie and it might just be the vanderbeek and if you're that person let us know and, <laughs> and we if are you're sorry. not that person you don't have to let us know that's not important <laughs> um so all so, right yeah it's time for joel's pick of the week i i i didn't put too much thought into this because a, a, a movie immediately came to mind that for me as a far superior movie with a not identical plot line but it's sort of similar a little bit kind of not really but um my recommendation would be 2006 the host korean film uh directed by bong joon ho who if you are familiar with the 2020 academy award beast parasite which we yeah. watched parasite that's his film. Uh, he also did Mother, which is another great film. And uh, Snowpiercer, which has since become a, a series that uh, uh, I've seen. But eh, he, yeah. I think the other two movies I mentioned were better. But he's got a, a deep bench. And so if you like uh, The Host or if you like any of his other films, check out the rest. He's an excellent filmmaker. Um but the, the movie, according to IMDb, is a monster emerges from Seoul's Han River and begins attacking people. Once victim's loving, I'm sorry, one victim's loving family does what it can to rescue her from its clutches. So basically this, this creature comes out of the water, can move on land, it's chasing people on the, on the shoreline, just murdering them left and right, and then takes them back to its little lair, and it takes this girl back, and then the family goes and tries to get them back from the lair Good. well he wants you to watch uh, it so i don't want you to go too far no that's that's all you need to know <laughs> because i i literally the first time i saw this movie which was probably about six months to a year after it came out 
I got pretty uh like nervous. Some of the scenes, it's the you know again the graphics are leaps and bounds better than what we just saw. But for you know it's two thousand six, so it's a little bit sketch now maybe. But it's so well done, and it's it's legitimately kind of nerve nerve wracking. Awesome. Well, thank you for your recommendation. And then we also did a random pick. Uh, we've got next week's movie all ready to go. So if you want to go to the Dollar Tree, because that's where we got all these movies, you can go ahead and you pick up at your there. local Dollar Tree, The uh, Marshes. Or? The Marshes. This is a Shutter original film. Looks kind of like I'm excited uh, about that. Wolf Creek, but in the swamp. Maybe? I like Wolf Creek. Wolf Wolf Creek was creepy. Like I, mean, I saw Wolf so Creek in the theater. You did? Sure did. I'm a fan. I've seen uh, the movies and the show, and um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a special place in my heart for. Uh, oh yeah, this definitely. My looks friend Graham. Very very uh, uh, yeah. It looks very very. It's in the Australian wilderness. It's a bunch of microbiologists. Yeah. And, yeah, they're traveling through the marshes, and he's stalking their every move. So, yes, it definitely sounds very similar. I mean, and, they, like they I said, it's a Shutter cover. original. So yeah. Looks like an overweight John Jarrett. Uh, it does. If, yeah. if you're familiar with Wolf Creek. But if you're yeah. not, there's another one. That one's a little bit of a tough watch at times. Yeah. But it's good. So... Well, we appreciate you watching us today. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed this as much as we enjoy doing it. We had fun. And if you decide that you do want to find out more information about The Newly Deads, please go to thenewlydeads.com. Um, or you can go on to Facebook. Uh, you can find us at yeah. The Newly Deads. And we monitor and, that yeah. on the regular. Yes, he does, definitely. Uh, we're on Instagram and also on TikTok. So, and until next time, keep it cheap and creepy. Thank you. Bye. Go look after your mother and sister. Where are you going? We're going to finish this. Goodbye.